they were good miners, they were good husbands, good wives, uh, lovely families and hard workers and all of a sudden bang. It's the fact that we have no life. We don't know where our life's going to go or where it's ever going to get there. You know, we, we need to get a life back and right now we have no concept of, of when or how or why it's, it's ever going to be there again. The cases that arose from Gordonstone, they, they were all important. There were so many firsts. The first order under Section 170 GA, which uh, required the company to consult with the union, came in the Gordonstone dispute. Uh, the first mass uh, successful mass unfair dismissal um, came in the Gordon, uh, Gordonstone dispute. The first exceptional matters order made under the Workplace Relations Act was made in the Gordonstone dispute. The first time that workers had banded together in a class action against their employer in a housing issue came in the Gordonstone dispute. It came also at a time that was important for the union movement overall because you had others like Patrick's planning similar sorts of actions and the lawyers in those um, cases were able to talk to us about our experience in Gordonstone. I remember talking to Greg, Greg Combe about our experiences in the Industrial Relations Commission and uh, encouraging him that maybe the Industrial Relations Commission wasn't the best place to be uh, in terms of uh, the dispute that he was facing. Um, we, had, we, were, we, we had discussions throughout the union movement about what was going, what was going on. The case that went to the High Court, for example, uh, that case was about private arbitration. The public sector unions were the most um, affected by that decision about the jurisdiction to um, deal with disputes uh, in private arbitration. So um, Stephen Jones, who was the industrial officer at the time, is now the, the general secretary of the CPSU, was very keen, a very keen supporter of us in that litigation. And that's because it meant things to the public sector workers as well. And so those cases that were run and, and the support that the union gave for those cases, uh, many of those became firsts and many of those became important precedents and important examples for the, for the big disputes that followed. Uh, in the mining industry as well, the big disputes at Hunter Valley and Mount Thorley. Yeah, but obviously it's a sad day in some ways, but um, I suppose you just got to hope that uh, there was a chance to get as many people down the Commission on Thursday and Friday and see whether the Commission gets a bit of, um, a bit of justice over there. But, um, yeah, don't know. Very, very sad today, after such a long battle. And the hardest part's going to be when it's all finally comes down and we won't be here any longer. How do you feel about all of this getting pulled down today? Very sad. Very sad, Margaret. It's ironic, isn't it? You win everything, and these bastards are still in there. Mm. Uh, not real good. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't really like it, but that's the way to... The system goes, so you got to obey the system. Yep, don't feel real good about it. <laughs> That's about it. The fight's not over, but... Uh, sad. So it's been a long time. I don't feel very happy at all, Margaret. Oh, what else? What, else, what other questions would you like to ask? That's me? the only question I want you to answer. I don't feel too impressed about it at all, mate. But if we, if we have to go to Sydney to run our campaign, then that's where we're going. Good on you. Jim, how do you feel like people aren't coming down today? Shit house. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? That's it. I'm not going to stop breathing, but I don't like it. It gets pushed out. Yeah, we're at no show. It's pushed out, not forced in. <laughs> this is getting recorded, well, you know. <laughs> very, very, very sad day. I don't feel it should be coming down. I feel it should stay here. And if they want to burn this one down, let them burn it down. We'll fight them burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> so 
just had a bit of fun today. The court proceedings continued throughout 1999, but by mid-1999, Rio Tinto had employed a replacement workforce and the court proceedings became academic. The federal court found that the Industrial Commission should never have quashed the re-employment order, but nothing could be done about it as Arco no longer owned the mine. Rio Tinto went to the Supreme Court and was granted an injunction against the union from taking any further legal action. The dispute was effectively over. Two multinational mining giants, Arco and Rio Tinto, had been allowed to sack the Gordonstone workers and to replace them with a non-union workforce. Someone's got a bit of brain. Just dropped the last marquee. She's down. Everything else is down. Just got a little bit to clean it up, a bit of tidying up. Pick up some rubbish. All loaded up, ready to end it down. The union's only as strong as its members and uh, you know when you go and have a look at uh, some of uh, the towns and the operations and you get to meet the mine workers and their families you actually get uh, a very good idea of how I think committed and uh, fairly strong in character Australians are because I mean we're typically Australian uh, most of our members work in country areas, uh, so there's a little bit of bush in them and a heck of a lot of determination. So, I mean, the spirit of mine works is sort of spirit of Australia, and uh, that's one of the things that uh, multinational companies like Arco and Rio Tinto can't understand. They think that they can easily get the allegiance of workers by offering them a few more dollars. Really what they're asking Australians to do is to sell out their culture uh, for a few dollars and uh, that just won't happen. And this is where a lot of these uh, mining companies underestimate the strength of our organisation. It's really built on the character of the people. Hold that line, hold that line, sisters, brothers, never we can stand and hold that picket line. Hold that line against the bosses when they try to drive us back. Hold that line against the coppers and their unbaton attacks. Hold that line against the government, against all enemies of our class. Hold that line against the scabs to know we'll never let them pass. Singing now, hold that line, hold that line. Sisters, brothers, never we can stand. Hold that picket line, hold that line. Sisters, brothers, never we can stand, hold that picket line.